We've started this series, I call it Come Holy Spirit. And I like that phrase, Come Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, it's an invitation, isn't it? It's a prayer. It's a statement of belief, but it's a statement of desire and want. We really need to say that more often, don't we? Come, Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, we could say it in our worship services. Come, Holy Spirit. I wonder if I could get your attention for just a moment. I wonder if we could all just let our thoughts go away from all the other stuff and turn them to the Lord and maybe give Him the invitation. You know, the book of Revelation says, He stands at the door and knocks. If anyone will come and open the door, He will come into them. Maybe we just need to say it together. Are you ready? Come, Holy Spirit. Take your Bible. Mark chapter 4. Stand with me in honor of reading God's Word. Lord, come. Mark chapter 4, let's begin reading in verse number 35. On the same day, when evening it had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. This is on the Sea of Galilee. He had been teaching and preaching them many days, and he was tired and he was weary. I don't know why it was. It was always at night that he told them to get into the boat. But they got into the boat at the end of the day to cross over to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Verse 36, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? They weren't dying. They thought they were. But they went in that moment and said, do you not care? Then he arose, rebuked the wind, said to the sea, peace, be still. Literally, he said, hush, be calm. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey Him? Let's pray. Come Holy Spirit, we invite You. Speak to our hearts. Speak life unto us. We are a people of need. We live in the storms. The hardships of a life are around us. The noise of the day is deafening. We need to hear from you. Truly, Lord, all is vain if you don't speak. Lord, I stand before your people, not so that they can hear a word from me, but I pray that they hear a word from you. So, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing unto you. Preach me, Lord. Fill me with your words. But, Lord, speak to all of our hearts. Do a Jesus work in our midst. Serve for your glory and your glory alone. In your name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. The voice of the Holy Spirit has been my closest confidant and friend. He has convicted me. He has comforted me. He has moved my heart. He has led my spirit. He has been there with me for almost 50 years to help me along my journey. And yet I I need Him more now than I ever have. I think we need Him more now than we ever could ever understand or admit. We need to hear the voice of God. Maybe I need to say we need to listen to the voice of God. There are so many noises that are out there 
The circumstances of life are loud. The difficulties of life are deafening. People around us are loud. And our critics, they are the loudest. Can we hear God with so much noise? This past week I was... Uh, I saw a marquee on a church sign. I don't know if it was the Sunday sermon that was coming up. I don't know if it was just a thought for the day. I don't know if it was a sermon series that the pastor was going through. But it simply said this, in the eye of the storm. Psalms 107, the author of that psalm wrote the, the psalm, based upon the redemption of God for the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, when they were dealing with the redemption that God would give them as they came back from captivity, God led them all the way. And here is what Psalms 107 verse 28 says. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and He brings them out of their distress. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. I wonder if the disciples were thinking about that when they were there in the boat. It had been a days of teaching. Jesus opened up to, to share the truths of God. But hear this. We need more than teaching because we've heard plenty of sermons. We've read the Word many times. And really, it's vain. Are you listening? It's vain to hear the Word of God, to not have a practical step of faith in our life that follows. To hear just simply truth but never have an application of truth in your life really doesn't matter whatsoever. So he got them in the boat to get away from the crowd, away from the noise, away from the stress, away from the busyness. He was tired and he was weary. And the Bible says that he got back in the stern of the boat, grabbed a pillow, and just fell asleep. Had to be a Baptist, amen? Just fell asleep that was there. And as often happened, a storm came up on the Sea of Galilee. The, the Sea of Galilee is actually in a very low place and it's surrounded by mountains. And from the north, the wind can come through and it will, because it's almost a bowl, because of the, the mountains on both sides of it, the winds will come through and start sweeping through in, in a circling motion. And it's not, it's not uh, unusual for a storm to come up. Matter of fact, it's a perfect place for one to come up. And as they went out that night, when the clouds would be dark, and it would be dark of night, but not being able to have any light from the stars, and all of a sudden the rain's coming and the wind's blowing, and all of a sudden this storm is hitting them real hard. Now, the, now, now listen, there's four professional fishermen in the boat. Many small boats are going with them. They've been on those waters many times. They've been on the storms that quickly would spring up many times. But this one was different. This time the storm caught them by surprise, and it was a strong storm. And the waves are beating against it. Now you know that men, professionals, the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to try to take charge and navigate and turn the boat into the waves and get the people starting to row and, and putting forth all the effort. But something about this storm, it was different to the place that now they were fearing for their life. Remember the way that our mind works. The thoughts come into our mind. The feelings come from, from those thoughts. And the choices occur from that. They're looking at this. They're looking at the storm. They're listening to the howling of the wind. They're seeing the boat is now starting to fill with water, and they're afraid. And when professional fishermen get afraid, you know something is up. So now they're saying, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And they run to the back of the boat, and they awaken Jesus from his sleep, and hear the words, do you not care? Do you not care? 
Isn't that, doesn't that sound a lot like us when we go through the storms of life? And that, how life can get loud and things can get difficult. Satan attacks, attacks your family, attacks those closest that come against you, attacks those friends at work, someone gets sick, some difficulty happens, some hardship is there, and it seems like the, the, the very pounding of the waves of life come against us, and we're beaten down and we're weary and we don't know really what to do whatsoever, and how often we go to God instead of giving Him worship and honor and praise and glory that He rightly deserves. We come to Him with an attack saying, do you not care? All we can see is about us. All we can see is about what's happening to us into that moment. And we're freaking out. And, and we're, we're so weary. We're so worried. We're so afraid. In the eye of the storm. My mind immediately went to a hurricane. Those massive storms that sometimes can cover hundreds of miles. And on the outer parts of the storm, the winds can go 60, 70, 80, 90 miles an hour. As you get into it, sometimes it'll get to 100, 110, 120. But the strongest winds are reserved for just outside of the eye of the storm. I have heard of some hurricanes when they're over water could have winds blowing as hard as 160 miles an hour. 160 miles an hour blowing, but just in an instant you can move from the hardest, strongest winds of the storm to the calm. To the calm. When God would reach His arms of love around you and draw you close, they await Jesus. And He stands up. Now, He was in a dark, He was in a deep sleep. I mean, He's sleeping through a storm, right? You ever had one of those? You ever been awakened out of a deep sleep? He's probably like, oh, guys, leave me alone. Maybe He got some of the water that was in the bottom of the boat and splashed it on His face. But He stood up. And he said these words, peace, be still. Literally, hush, be calm. You ever seen anybody trying to quieten a baby? And a baby screaming? And you go, shh, shh, hush, hush, calm down, be calm. You see, Jesus did not have to shout over the waves and the winds and the noise. The God of creation only had to whisper. And the winds stopped in a moment, in a second. Because they had no choice. Because nature listens to the voice of the Almighty God, as we should. And the winds stopped, and the waves that were tossing the boat slowed down, and now there's a stillness. Have you ever been out on the water when everything was just so quiet and still? You could hear so very well. And he looked at them and said, why so fearful? And he speaks to us and says, why so, why so anxious? Why so worried? You've got your eye on the storm. But you're here with me. My arms of love are around you. The storm can't get to you when you're in the peace in the eye of the storm. So much of our prayers are prayed that the storm would cease that the storm would be quiet, that the storm would go away, that we would get our way, that the storm would listen. I mean, we, are, we know what's best. We know what's right. 
If we could just get the storms of life to listen and we beat them down and we repeat and we, we batter them and we, we, we come against them and we pray against them. Jesus wasn't worried about the storm. Because Jesus had never moved a moment an inch away from the peace of God in the midst of the storm. Why are you so fearful? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Faith is not something simply to be soaked up while you're sitting in the pew of the church. Where you pronounce that you believe and you pronounce that you trust God and you love God and that, and that He has first place in your heart and you will serve Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's not just for the pew in the church. It's for the streets and the workplace and the hardships when the storms and the winds are blowing against you. I love this. Hush. Be calm. That's a statement of fact. You know, <clears throat> how loud it was when the wind was blowing. How quiet it was when Jesus spoke. They had a moment. They went from ultimate in fear of the storm to fearful of the God who had power over the storm. And it sung deep into their hearts. By the way, they would be reminded of this many times. The psalmist David wrote in the psalm, of all the difficulties that he was going through, that God was his place. Many of you have heard of Corey Tim Boone. You may have read her book or the movie that was based upon the book called The Hiding Place. How she, in Germany, during the Second War, would bring people into her home to hide them from the armies and from the war and from the destruction that would come against them. And... and in their, in their house, they had a place where they could be secretly hid. And they took that verse from Psalms, the hiding place. Do you have a hiding place in the presence of Almighty God? God often speaks the loudest when things are the quietest. In the midst of the storm, we need a break. We need an escape. We need a time of quiet. Psalms 46 says this. B. There's an action that needs to be taken. Be still. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. This past spring, I challenged everyone to end their day by being quiet before the Lord. I believe that may have set the record for being the most ignored bibl biblical admonition that I've ever given to church. I had a couple people came up to me after that and said, uh, Pastor, I tried it. It just didn't work. Nobody else even said a word. Matter of fact, a lot of you might not even remember me even saying it. I simply said, at the end of your day, get out of the noise, get out of all the things that's going through your mind, and be quiet before the Lord, and ask Him two questions. Be quiet and say, Lord, what was it that happened in my life today that gave you great glory and honor? How did you use me today for your glory? Then I said, Lord, what did I do today that was not welcomed by your Holy Spirit? What did I do today to grieve you? I think we need to end the day listening to God and have a, having a teaching moment. Lord, how did I quench your spirit today? 
Maybe we could get quiet enough to hear the small voice of God. I believe noise may be one of the two greatest impediments to our spiritual growth. When our lives get loud, when our lives get busy, when our lives get stressed, we lose the ability to listen. Y'all may have heard me talk about, I've mentioned it, my hearing aids. Somewhere 35, 36, 37 years, I've had tinnitus. I've had a ringing in my ears. 24-7, 365, it never goes away. Some people say it's so deafening that they can't sleep. I just, if you hear it every night, you just get used to it. Matter of fact, when you hear music, you get used to it. When you hear conversations, you just get used to it. And I was on my phone. By the way, when you have 10 and ice, you also get umpteen people come and tell you all the things that if you'll do them, that it'll make your 10 and go away. And they lie. It, it doesn't ever go away. I mean, I had someone said, would you try this? And I said, I tried it. And it did go away for about five seconds. And then it was back. So I was on my phone, and uh, an advertisement came up. Now, I don't know why this particular advertisement came up, but it said, um, if you have tendonitis and you have, uh, you know, that really the only thing that will help is hearing aids. And I was intrigued. I'm tired of hearing this rumbling, buzzing sound in my ears. So I said, well, I'll try this. So I went down to this place, and by the way, they gave me a 45-day money-back guarantee. So uh, they gave me a hearing test. You know, they put these headphones on me, and they said, if you hear it in this ear, hear it in this ear, raise your hand. So I sat there and said, when are we going to begin? I knew I was in trouble then. I started to. They said, Mr. Stevens, you have hearing loss. I said, well, okay. They said, uh. Get this, the hearing loss that you have is never coming back. And they said, but we can help you hear the sounds that you can't hear. And I thought as a pastor, that was pretty important. They said, we can actually help you to hear speech. They said, by the way, you're going to still continue to have hearing loss as you get older, but we can help maintain that you can continue to hear speech. And I thought, as a pastor, that I think I need to be able to hear people talk. And then they, then they gave me the money question. They gave me the money statement. They said this, it'll take two or three weeks, but really what's going to happen is they're going to retrain your brain to hear. Your brain's had to take your hearing that you have and, and it's had to work with it and, and it's tried to manipulate so they can get the most hearing that it can. But with these hearing aids, it's going to, you'll be able to hear, but it, you're going to have to retrain your brain how to hear. And I'm like, really? But it works. And I wonder through all the storms of life, through all the noise that's out there, throughout all the rumblings that make us fearful and worry and fret, the hardships, the stresses, the difficulties, when there's a loving God who wants to be there with us, who wants to make a difference with us, to hear Him, to the Jew, they had a name for God. Jehovah. But they had the personal name for God, Yahweh. And it was, so, it was so sacred to them that they would never voice the name Yahweh. When they wrote it, they would write it down, but if they spoke it, they, they would just substitute the word Lord because they thought it was so sacred to even say the personal name of God. But then, oftentimes when they write it, 
would write it, they, they would not add the vowels to it because it was so sacred to them. And they also said, Y-H-W-H, the constants yet for Yahweh. They said the sounding of those words was the sound, listen to me now, the sounds of the breath of God. God would whisper and that we would hear over the noise of the storms he can quiet our spirit and speak plainly and clearly to our ears we're supposed to pray as a matter of fact the Bible says we are to pray without ceasing I wonder should we listen without ceasing to? Should we let the Lord retrain our thinking so that we can learn to listen for the voice of God again and grow deaf to the world and grow deaf to the circumstances? Go, grow deaf to the hardships and the fears that it may bring because there's a there's a plumb line with God that the winds of life cannot ever blow it away. It stays true. It stays still before Him. We can be with God's arms around us. Still in the storm, but in the eye of the storm. When God can quieten our spirit and say, peace, be still. Are we listening? Jesus gave the admonition, He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. When I think of you, think of all the circumstances that you're going through, all the difficulties in each and every one of your lives, all the things that you're bearing that no one else knows, if you're a child of God, your greatest, closest confidence, the Holy Spirit, is the paraclete. He comes alongside you. He grows close with you. He's right there. He knows your situation with greater understanding than even you do. And yet He wants to speak peace. Anybody need peace? Anybody need to hear the quiet voice of God? Anybody need to have your soul put in a place of rest? Be still and know that I am God. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.